Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name's Shadow Wraith and today I'm going to be going over how to effectively use your army. Now, by that I mean if you've got an army already that you are either struggling to use or have no idea on how to use or are thinking at getting a new army and you're not sure how you're going to go about it, this is the place for you. So, before I start, um, I just wanted to mention I will be going over how my recent test games have gone for my Far Harad list I mentioned in my last video. If you haven't watched that video, I mean, I'll, I can put a link in the description below, no dramas. But I will be going over that quickly because it was rather interesting and it was quite good to see the results because I did have a little rethink on how to play Far Harad and it worked, absolutely. So it's kind of in tune with this video. So, how to play your army. The first thing you need to know, straight from the top, is their playstyle because every army has a playstyle i.e. the Gondor works really really well with the shield wall so high defense sticking together getting some of the buffs whilst also having the maneuverability of the cavalry which are quite good so you've got the um, how would you say it? the hammer and anvil tactic which works really well I find with Gondor where you get the enemy to charge your shield wall and then your knights come in for the flank or from a rear charge and you absolutely decimate and you've got things like Moria who work quite well in my opinion as a horde army you can go for the monster mash if you wish it can work but again it's a really elite army or quite elite and they really do well in competitive events from my experience so yeah it's just knowing how the army is meant to be played I know that my fiefdoms are a bubble army is what I call them because they like being in a little bubble where they can benefit from Imra Hill's buff along with Forlang's buff along with all the other buffs that the heroes give them because they like sticking together same with the army of the dead they like getting the minus one courage to the enemies from the king of the dead Aragorn's banner so on and so forth so you've got bubble armies you've got horde armies and to an extent you can have um rush armies some armies play quite well as a rush army by that i mean they're really quick at getting your face straight away and absolutely uh, wreak havoc so things like dark denizens of murkwood are quite good at that because they ignore terrain and they love getting stuck in but with their low defense you do not want to be sticking around for the shooting and um also, you've got the Serpent Horde, which work really well as a gun line. Really, really, really well competitively as a gun line with the Betrayer, letting them re roll to wound from their poison arrows. And it works incredibly well, as I found out in my last game. So, that's done. You need to know their style. Off the back of that, you need to know your own play style. Deep down inside your heart, you know how you like to play. Do you like charging up and beating things in the face? Well, you want a more rush army. And you can make rush armies. So if you're looking at a book and going, I can, yeah, these guys seem to work really well off the charge. They're quick. Boom, that's a rush army. So fiefdoms can be quite a good rush, uh, rush army if you've got the swan knights with all the heroes that buff them. Um, the serpent horde, they can rush with their um, Harajan raiders because they can have bows, so they can be shooting on the way in and then rush in with their war spears that are poisoned, supported by the Betrayer, letting them re-roll to wound. So their strength 3, plus 1 to wound, on the charge, double attacks, re-rolling. Disgusting. And it works. And it works. And plus they've got low defence, so you don't want to be hanging about. But some people like tanking, so you've got the dwarves, army of the dead. Army of the dead are better at tanking, in my opinion, than the dwarves, because the counter to dwarves' defence is army of the dead. So... Rock, paper, scissors, army of the dead wins against dwarves. In my opinion. In my opinion. Okay. So, after you've come over those two points, you know you want to play a shooty army, and that is your preferred playstyle, and you are looking at Serpent Horde. Boom, you know you're looking for the combos. So, by the combos, I mean things you can do to make them disgusting. Like I just said. So, you know that everyone gets poisoned arrows, you get a 50% bow limit if it serpent horde and you keep you know to green allies or pure serpent horde and then you look at the betrayer and he works really well poisons and what have all your bows got poison arrows boom that's a combo so yeah there you go um moving on from that obviously 
the best way to learn how an army plays is either a watching a army guide on how to play certain armies they're quite good quite useful sometimes they're a little bit lacking in you know the person they don't consider the driver if that makes sense on how to think and the tactics behind it they just say this is really good if you combine it with this but obviously if you don't play like that is you're not going to do well in it so i'd probably try and get into contact with a few people who play that army quite well so they don't have to be super duper like top tier i've won you know throwing a skulls six times um with angmar kind of level but people who do go to tournaments and don't place last really nothing wrong with placing last but ideally you want someone in the top five top ten top five bracket and they will give you pointers usually most of the people i've met in this community because it's a fantastic community are more than happy to help uh, especially if you're a newer player i have received help on my far harad list P um my good friend given me pointers on what works well for him and the kind of tactics that i'm thinking of what to avoid what to be scared of and what i know i can take so far harad are quite happy at charging elves but you want to be avoiding a lot of shooting, thinking of line of sight, stuff like that. So, yeah, um, that's my best option. Obviously, if you ever want to have a chat about any of these armies, um, I know quite a bit, I think, about most armies in this game. I do have a link to my Discord server in the description down below. So, please do join, because it's not just me in there. There's a fair few people, and they all play a multiple different armies, and they're all more than happy to help. So, that's it. The final step is practice, practice, practice. Just keep practicing with that army. So, you know the playstyle you want to do. You've got a list, uh, list, and then you practice that list. And you can go, you know what? Those Muhad warriors, or for example, did not help me out in the battle. What can I get for possibly cheaper, or same points, or maybe even a slight point increase that will do what I wanted them to do better? For example, I replaced my Muhad warriors with Harajan Warriors, with Spears, because they were meant to support the K uh, the Half-Trolls, and they seemed a little bit lacking. So, I got a cheaper option, with Poison, and then the Betrayer. You can see where the combo is coming with that, and they're supporting Half-Trolls. It works really, really well. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole sum of the um, video. I've got some more good news tomorrow. <laughs> It has been announced in the UK um, that the online stores will be opening, which is fantastic for Games Workshop, so I will be able to get some more hobby bits. And, yeah, it's really good. I think I think we're getting there with all this uh, rubbish of lockdown. But if anyone out there is ever interested in a game, it will be on Tabletop Simulator for now. Uh, please do join the Discord channel. And you can arrange games with either myself or other people on there. Because everyone's looking for a game in such a horrible uh, time. By horrible, I mean not getting your hobby fix. So yeah, back to my game. So, what happened? I went against elves. So, Rivendell, to be more precise. And actually more precise, the Last Alliance. So you had Numenor there as well. And he had quite a few big heroes. And this is a guy I play against quite a lot. Uh, top guy, top guy, brilliant. He's uh, he's my double partner for most events I go to. But he um, he had Gilgalad, he had Elrond, and I believe he had Elendil. So very high tier heroes. Okay, but he's he's really good with his heroes. So again, that's coming back to the play style. He's really good at using heroes and utilizing heroic combats and strikes and knowing where his heroes need to be when and where. I'm not so good with uh, utilising my heroes, so I don't go for hero heavy lists. And then he had a whole bunch of Rivendell warriors with shields and swords, uh, supported by Rivendell warriors with shields. And a few Rivendell knights with bows in there. And I think that was it. Oh yeah, and obviously a bunch of Numenorians. Uh, so kind of 50-50 on sword and board and spear and board mix there. Then I brought with me my Far Harad list. This is 1,000 points and I had 10 half trolls, 
10 Harajan Warriors with Spears. The Serpent Lord, uh, Salazar or Saladar, big lad. So he was obviously my army leader because he's a hero and legend. I had 10 Harad, um, Harajan Warriors with bows. So they get the 50% bow army bonus, which is awesome. Uh, so I utilized that, absolutely. And then I had the Betrayer. So they're leading them. And then obviously the half trolls are being led by a Muhad King. And he's got the camel and the war spear. And we've got another Muhad King with a squad of 10 camels. And that was my list. Absolutely brilliant. It did really, really well. Um, initially, uh, we were playing Hold Ground. So it was, you know, we had to roll to see where we set up, things like that. And he rolled quite well, apart from Elrond, who didn't turn up until the next turn. And I I did okay, apart from my Serpent Lord, who rolled a 3 on um, the chart. So my opponent got to place it on like the north or south or something like that. But he had already put his army down, and he had two big warbands on the south side of the board. So I knew exactly where he was going to place that warband. And unfortunately, I had to spend a couple of his might points to uh, get him where I needed him to be. Not a good start, but I always think it's worth it because why would I save the might for a hero that's going to die? That's my philosophy. So he came in with one might point to sit with the uh, rest of the army, who deployed fine. They, they deployed fine. And yeah, the initial turns, I had obviously the superior firepower for the ranged. And poor old Gilgalad and Elendil came charging up on their horses tr to take out my archers, which they could have done quite comfortably, but I rolled a ridiculous amount of hits. Um, the Betrayer had popped his uh, ability in his movement, so they were re-rolling to wound, and I took out both their horses. And this is two turns of shooting, so I took out both their horses, and poor Gilgalad tripped and stubbed his toe when he came off his horse, and he also took an arrow to the chest, which he failed to fate. Two wounds down on Gilgalad, which was absolutely devastating. It it was really lucky for me. Really lucky for me. Not going to lie, I hate Gilgalad, so I didn't feel too bad, but I felt bad for my opponent because he's such a nice guy. Then, um, he did get Elrond in, and he came behind me and charged into the back of my Haradrim Spears. Uh, and killed everyone he touched because he's got like yeah Elrond is awesome but luckily um, he couldn't get Wrath of Bruni enough luckily because I think I resisted it the first time he tried and the second time he was in combat and at that point my um, heroic move went off and I managed to get my Muhad King in there times two so both Muhad Kings charged him along with a spearman, and he was trapped. Three-point trap. And I just striked higher than he did, and I rolled a six, and that was it. I run down. And then from that point forward, my half-trolls just absolutely stumped through the elves, because the elves either won the combat, but couldn't wound, uh, hurt my half-trolls, or if they did, they only took one wound off them, and they've got two wounds, so they're still sticking about at defense six. And... If I won the fight, he was taking two strength five hits to the face, uh, plus a spear support that is re-rolling to wound. And mind you, I, all this time I've got a six-inch banner because of the Serpent Lord. Uh, yeah, it was a lot down. Uh, yeah, it came to placement of models and my heroes actually. So where my banner was and where the Betrayer was for his poison ability. And then the camels did what camels did and knocked everyone off of their horse or knocked them down and killed them and stomped on them. Massive Muhad victory, very happy with how they performed. I still need a few more practice games with them because these are looking like the kind of army that I would like to take to an event. So, yeah, just let me know what you think on either my list or how the game went or anything I could have done better and also on any problems you got with how your armies play or anything you've done and overcome. I'd love to hear how it's gone for you guys. So yeah, 
I thank you ever so much for listening, and I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Whoa!